Ben, good afternoon to you. Hi. Can you just start off by telling us how this plan B for Saturday came about? Okay, so let me give you an update. So yesterday morning, we had one member of the management team tested COVID positive. He had had four close contacts, two of whom were players and two of whom were staff. So we immediately isolated that group. They went into self-isolation. We then surge tested the whole of the rest of the tour party, both lateral flow and PCR tests. All of those tests came back negative, apart from one player who returned what's called a single gene positive, which in other words is a very low level positive. But just out of caution, we then isolated that player and all of his close contacts. Uh, and we were then advised by our medical advisory committee that we had to test that individual again today, which we've now done. Thankfully, that um, test came back negative. He has to test again tomorrow. And if that also comes back negative, then he and all of his close contacts can be released back into the bubble and they would then be available for selection for the um, game that we've announced tomorrow night against the Sharks. Ben, it, it does seem from here in the UK and Ireland, what's happening to the Lions and with the Springboks as well, like this tour is doomed or cursed, whatever word you want to use, is becoming increasingly difficult to convince yourself that it's all going to go without a hitch, the test series, or do you think it's inevitable that there'll be more headaches to come? Well, look, what I would say is that it is a challenge, right? This is a challenge. I'm definitely not going to sit here and say that this is easy, but we are absolutely determined to make it work, and we've put measures in place to make it work. So we're living in a very strict biosecure environment when we're, where we're governed by very uh, strict protocols. We have a medical advisory group in place that has independent virologists and infectious disease specialists that advise us on what, on what we can and can't do. This is the same for the Lions and the Springbok camp. We're tested frequently, minimum three times a week. We have no interactions with the general public. We're playing in far fewer venues than would originally have been the case. And of course, we don't have fans in the venue. So we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that this um, tour will go ahead and we are determined to make it a success. Ben, I don't know if you watched the football last night or if you watched any Wimbledon, but when you see 60,000 fans at Wembley and 15,000 fans in centre court, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but in hindsight, do you think it was regrettable not having the tour in the UK? So I've seen snippets. I, I didn't see the football last night, sadly, because I was, I was elsewhere. But look, my view is it's wonderful to see people back at Centre Court at Wimbledon. Fantastic to see people back in Wembley with, I think, 60,000 they had there for the semi-final, uh, didn't they? And look, we should say congratulations to Gareth Southgate and the England football team for getting to the final for the first time uh, in an awfully long time. But look, we are here in South Africa. We made the decision back in March that we would make this tour work in South Africa, which I believe to be the right decision. We are determined to make it work and there are absolutely no plans for us to deviate from that agreed strategy. Is the option on the table if things worse worsen that both yourselves and the Springboks could hop on a flight and play the series out on British soil? Well, it's certainly not as simple as just hopping on a flight and playing the series out on British soil. We're very much here taking things one step at a time. We deal with the challenges as they arise. We make decisions one day at a time. So the focus today has been dealing with the rearranged Sharks fixture for the weekend. We then get on a plane on Sunday. We travel down to Cape Town where we have more fixtures. Um, and there are no plans for us to do anything different to that. Thanks, Ben. Ben, in the statement it says that you're doing tests today and tomorrow and those will determine whether you're able to fulfil the Sharks fixture. What has to happen for that game to be played? Does everyone in the Lions camp have to come back negative? No, so the individual that tested positive, uh, who we retested this morning and has now tested negative, that individual has to test negative so that he and all of his close contacts can be released. At that point you have enough players available to fulfil the fixture. Common sense said we'd probably lose one game on the tour due to COVID just to, because of the maths involved of things. We've now had one. The spring box against George though has also gone. What in your opinion would it take for the test matches to be considered in serious doubt? Well I don't think I'd set an arbitrary um, benchmark if you like that would put things in serious doubt. I think the approach that we take is Make sure we abide by the protocols that have been designed by experts in this area. 
make sure that we exhibit all of the right behaviours as we are at the moment. Everybody is socially distancing, everybody is wearing masks, everybody is focusing on hand hygiene, meetings taking place in well-ventilated areas. The protocols are working at the moment because they are identifying people that have sadly contracted the virus. We're then isolating them from the rest of the population and then after a period of time, they can be reintegrated once they've got through the, their infectious um, period. So we're doing everything we can to make sure the matches can go ahead. As managing director, have you addressed the players today to reassure them of their safety and, and just sort of, if you like, reinforce the fact that you're doing everything you can to keep them safe? Oh, we have constant dialogue. Um, we have constant dialogue with the players and with the staff to make sure everybody is aware of what's going on and if anybody had any doubts or any um, issues they wanted to raise they'd be able to come to me or any part of the management team at any point. So that uh, dialogue is constant. Uh, one other point that was made in the, uh, the statement was said that uh, no team other than the Sharks could meet the bubble conditions to play Saturday's game. Presumably, therefore, they're not allowed to bring in any reinforcements to their squad. Is it fair to ask them to play two games in four days with the same group of players? So you're absolutely right. They are the only side in the country that's able to meet the really strict protocols that exist. That's because they've already been living in a bubble. Um, in terms of playing that number of games in a short period of time, look, that applies to us as well, doesn't it? Um, we were already scheduled to play a fixture on Saturday, albeit against the Bulls originally. Um, I can't comment specifically on the Sharks situation, but what I can say is, certainly from our side, we have absolutely fantastic medical and strength and conditioning teams in place here. They work extremely closely with the coaches, and if there was any doubt from a player welfare standpoint that the game should proceed, it wouldn't be happening. Now, I'm sure that's also the case in the Sharks, but I'm not uh, as close to their camp as I am to the Lions camp. Just finally from me, as you were arriving in South Africa as a group, what, nearly two weeks ago, we were told that Houteng was the epicenter of the third wave of COVID in South Africa. You're gonna to go to Cape Town this weekend, why has it taken nearly two weeks to, to go to a seemingly safer area? Is that not a bit like holding a, a, a gardening hose and then being surprised when water comes out at the end of it? Have you not put yourself in harm's way by staying in Houtek? No, I wouldn't say that that's a fair uh, representation of the situation, largely because we are in a biosecure bubble here. So we are protected as much as we can be because there is nobody coming in and out of our facility. We have the players, we have the management team, we have the hotel staff, but everybody here lives in the bubble. Nobody comes and goes. So the hotel staff don't go home, for example, at evening and then in the evening and then reintegrate the next day. They live on site here as well. And there are very few hotel staff. So actually our bubble is about as secure as it can be. And what you don't want to do is bring risk into the camp by having more time spent traveling around the country. So the more times you travel, the more opportunity there is for COVID to be introduced into the camp via somebody that is outside of that bubble environment. Thank you, Ben. You're on, you're on the Cody. Sorry, Ben, it's Michael Corcoran from RT here. Just continuing that point uh, with Andrew in terms of the schedule for the remaining matches, you've mentioned moving to Cape Town. Um, is the plan that everything else is going to be played out in Cape Town or where are the discussions about the, uh, the particularly the, you know, test two and three? Yeah, so the plan is that we move down there on uh, Sunday, as I said earlier. We then have two matches scheduled down in Cape Town. The current intention is that we play those two matches down in Cape Town. What happens after that? We're currently in discussion with the South African Rugby Union. So at the moment, we haven't deviated from the originally agreed schedule. But of course, we are contingency planning all the time. And how confident are you that the tour will be played to a conclusion up to and including those three test matches regardless of where they're played? Well, I'm confident that as long as we all exhibit the right behaviours within our respective camps, which we are, then we give it the absolute best possible chance of going right the way through to the end of that third test. Cheers, thank you. Can I ask, uh, what's the reason that not all of the players have received the double jab, as I think was reported last night? So I don't think we've ever specified who has and hasn't received double jabs, and I don't think we want to really get into a conversation about, uh, about that. What we said was the vast majority of the tour party have been double jabbed. 
Okay. Well, Ben, uh, just um, there was some speculation uh, over the last week that the Lions would want to get to Cape Town um, as quickly as possible. You now obviously staying in in Gauteng for for the match on Saturday. Is that kind of a trade-off between obviously getting away from the epicenter of COVID, but also the importance of not missing out on any more game time? And have some of the squad already gone, or will some of the squad already go to Cape Town just to prepare for the SAA game on Wednesday? So no, all of the squad remains together. So we, we don't have a split party. There is none of the squad down in Cape Town. Uh, we were already always intending to go to Cape Town on the 11th, which is Sunday, uh, and that's still the case. So there was never a plan in place for us to come to Hauteng and play perhaps one or two matches and then decamp and go down to Cape Town. So we're sticking with the original plan, which was to go down on Sunday. Uh, can you just sort of run us through the series of events yesterday in terms of timings and, and just how yesterday played out and, and how sort of close it was and close to the bone and the wire? So yesterday morning we received the positive tests that I spoke about earlier uh, where we had one member of the management team who tested positive and we then isolated everybody. We then lateral flowed and PCR'd between round about 10 and 12 o'clock from memory and of course the time uh, the point that takes a lot of time is the period to return the results of those PCR tests. Lateral flows return uh, relatively quickly, but PCRs, of course, take a lot longer. So we had to wait for those PCR tests to come back before we were able to understand uh, the position around the remaining players. Hey, Ben. Hey, John. Just on the, the vaccination thing, do the Lions not think it's a huge risk for someone who hasn't been double vaccinated to be in South Africa, given the situation there? Well, I think everybody has a right to make their own decision on whether or not they want to be vaccinated. We have a number of strategies in place to mitigate the risk in any environment. And I think it's wrong for anybody to think that vaccination is, is some sort of universal panacea. I'm afraid it's not. So we have an approach which is multi-layered where, uh, as well as having the majority of the party being vaccinated, we are also exhibiting all the right behaviours that I've spoken about before. We're getting tested three times a week, if not more. We're socially distancing, we're well ventilated, we're observing hand hygiene, we're wearing masks, we're not integrating with the public, and we're travelling very, very infrequently. So we think we've got a pretty robust set of protocols in place that will keep us as safe as they possibly can. How many people aren't fully vaccinated? I don't think we're going to get into a conversation about who, who isn't, isn't vaccinated, but I just make the point again that uh, the very high majority of the party are double jabbed. Can I just ask them the other positive case yesterday, have they tested positive again? No, the case that tested... So the member of management tested positive. That is a genuine positive. So that person and the close contacts associated with that person are isolating. The other one that was positive, which was a single gene positive, has now tested negative. And we're going to do another test tomorrow to confirm that that person is negative. And very briefly, how long will they have the same isolation the positive case? The first positive case. So they stay in isolation according to the recommendation of our medical advisory group and we have meetings with them coming up to just determine that. All right. All right, you that? Okay, I've got to extend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry to draw that. Just, just uh, a couple of um, uh, factual things. Just following on, on, on the uh, um, who's available, does that mean that all, all the players are available to select? And if, that, if the one player is clear again tomorrow, will all the players be available apart from the two who were the contacts of the original management um, positive case? So that's correct, subject to the usual injuries and niggles, Owen, but yes, everybody will be available. But we are testing the whole of the tour party tomorrow again, just to be overly cautious or extra cautious, rather. And if anybody else were to test positive, then they wouldn't be available. But, but yes, everybody we have, will be available subject to injuries and, uh, and so on. So on, the, on the Sharks, you were asked about them playing two games in four days, and you say that's what, what we, the Lions, are doing. The, the, the Lions are not big enough squad to, to cater for that. So in your discussions with the Sharks, 
are you, are you assuming they'll set uh, they'll field uh, an almost entirely different 15, which is what we had assumed that the Lions would do? Well, so our discussions are with the South African Rugby Union as opposed to directly through the Sharks. And then it's uh, the South African Rugby Union that would have those conversations with the Sharks. Um, I couldn't tell you what their plan is around exactly who they will field, because, of course, my focus has been on, on the Lions. But we've been given the assurances by the South African Rugby Union that the match can proceed and the Sharks will be able to put a side out. Okay, that's quite quick one. On the, on the vaccinations, you see, you suggested that some uh, uh, in the party have decided not to become uh, double uh, vaccinated. Have some not even had the single jab as well? So the only thing I'll say is that, again, I'm sort of repeating myself, the vast majority of our people are um, double jabbed, but we just see that as one strand of a very um, robust COVID mitigation strategy that involves all the other, um, all the other areas that I talked about previously. Okay. Okay, awesome. Last one, Beth. Oh, Ben. Oh, sorry, Ben. It's Alex. Sorry, Ben. My bad. That's right. Paul. Alex. Uh, yeah, Ben. Hi, Alex from Mirror. Um, have you arranged this sharp step um, because it's the right thing to do from a, a rugby point of view or because you're contractually obliged to deliver an eight day package for the TV contract? Uh, from a rugby point of view. So we were, of course, scheduled to play a fixture on Saturday, albeit against the Bulls, not the Sharks. And we came into this country to play rugby matches, right? Not to sit in biosecure bubbles. So we want to play the matches so that we can prepare the side to be ready to take on the Springboks in the Test Series. And that was very much the driver behind the decision to go ahead on Saturday. Are you proposing to call up any more players onto this tournament? Not at this stage, no. Okay, and final question. Um, you talked about the hotel staff not going home living on site. Warren suggested last night that the COVID might come into the camp from that way, from, from hotel staff. So is that a change of um, a change of plan, a change of regime? No, it's not. So they've, uh, they've, the intention was always that they would be living on site and they've been on site for a period of time now. So no, that's not a change. Thank you. Last one, uh, Just two from, two from me. Um, Warren Gatlin said yesterday the situation has brought the team closer together. Now, compared to previous tours, what's it been like in-house? Well, I think the mood in the camp is, is very good, actually. It's very strong. We have, we're lucky, we've got a fantastic group of players. And not only are they the best players in the world, but they're also really strong individuals, really strong characters. We've also got a great management team. And if anything, the challenges that we're facing has pulled that group closer together. And we are now focused on just getting over every hurdle that we face and focusing on the rugby. Listen, Lions is such a special brand, special event. Having is like such a great thing, but do you feel in your heart of hearts that, you know, maybe postponing it to next year would have been the most best option for everyone, players, sort of spectators, etc.? Well, look, I don't think it's right to revisit any decisions. Uh, the choice was made back in March that we would go ahead here in South Africa. And we're focused now on doing the right thing by the tour, working as hard as we possibly can to make sure we deliver for the players, for the fans and for everybody here in South Africa. And all the feedback we get through the South African media in particular is that the country is desperate for this tour to be completed here. We know that sport in difficult times can provide a much needed distraction from the challenges that people face. And we hope we're providing something positive for people to enjoy.